I struggle with full color. It's either too bright, too garish, too dull. I just can't seem to get it right. So you're going to show us how to do that in watercolor today. Yep, I'm going to show you the right way. So we can, it's very easy. I'm going to show you just everybody can do it. Yeah, so um, I think everybody can do that. This is actually, uh, I think paint, I've been painting for a long time. And um, so the the usually before I start painting, I, I want to break it down just to give you an idea of how I approach the painting. And typically, it's not the color. It's actually the, when we get down to it, it actually uh, comes down to uh, simplification, simplifying what is it that you're trying to paint. And then once you have that, uh, uh, then you could actually uh, uh, using the uh, three values, the simplified to dark tone, mid tone, and light tone. And then once you have that, then we can, we can do a, a value study and use that as, your, uh, as my guide. So that way you could then you could work with the color. This way it will actually prevent from you from doing all the getting into the detail too fast. So this way we can uh, we could build that from the ground up. So I'm gonna switch uh, camera so that way you could see um, what I'm doing. Okay. Okay. So this is what you are looking at, and uh, this is. Can you, see, can you see me, Eric? Yep. Okay, so this is the uh, the image that I uh, I use for, for reference. So as you can see, just want to make sure that you can see all that. So this is the, the main composition, if I can put it right here. So if you break this down to uh, dark tone, uh, which is over here, and then your, your mid tone, which is right around here, and your light tone is just this shape right here. So this way, we are just focused on just the big shapes and, and simplify this uh, complicated scene into something that we could all relate to and we could identify that easily. So uh, before I start, I'm gonna start uh, using this as my reference and do a value study. And I'm gonna put this right over here. And typically, I would do it uh, using a um, this uh, vine charcoal because they're actually very easy to work with. And if you look at that, you'll see that there's a kind of a wedge right here, that V shape, uh, side V shape. So by doing that, I could actually establish the look. I mean, the big shapes where the the uh, this big shape is. Uh, and then uh, the light shape, which is kind of sitting right around here. And then, as I mentioned before, I have my light right here. This is going to be my light shape. And then my mid-tone shape is actually right around here. So if I have that established, and I'm going to change the composition slightly, So this way, it actually helped uh, me to break this uh, complicated scene into something that I could easily look at and said, oh, this is my mid tone, this is my light tone, and then now I just have to add my dark tone, which is here. And I wanted to kind of keep a, a simplified versions of this So this way it can be identified easily. And the way I actually wanted to, I don't want this, to, I, I want my, my focal point to be right around here. And the most colorful area is gonna be right around here. And remember, uh, I mentioned about uh, color. Color actually comes later. And, but the value is actually the one that drives all your, uh, your painting. So to, to um, 
before I, I start painting, this is something that I want to do. And, and this is the, com the simple com composition I like to set up. And uh, I will start right away. And I, I, I think this extra tree is just, uh, I, it breaks up the, the space too much. So I decided to, to leave out that tree. And, and I like to how, I like how uh, um, this is gonna be my, my focal point. And if my focal point here, I wanted to make this a little bit more interesting uh, by adding more interest over here. So this will be my focal point. And then all this is gonna lead my eyes to, to my focal point. And of course, don't forget my uh, light tone, my mid tone and my dark tone. So, so this way I have all my, my elements, work, my major uh, component of my composition worked out. And the next thing I'm gonna do is start painting. I mean, just using this as my, uh, my uh, value, as my guide, and then use th that as my, my, value, uh, my color information. Um, now it's about time to transfer the, the drawing uh, from the uh, uh, basic shapes into my watercolor uh, paper. And this is actually quite easy to accomplish. And because I don't um, put a lot of drawing, I, I don't spend a lot of time drawing because the more drawings I have, it actually uh, uh, holds me back because I have to, uh, I feel like I'm, I have to match the drawing. So this way, I just have to make sure the big shapes are in the right place. So this way I can identify my, my darks, my mid-tone, and then my uh, light tone, which is this shape right here. And this is gonna be my focal point. And this is my, uh, just another tree that I, uh, another shape here to balance the composition. So this is enough for me to start the, the painting. And I realized the more uh, drawing that I have uh, put down, it will uh, not help uh, me to, it'll help me. I, I mean, the, the, the more detail my drawing is, the uh, harder I'm gonna be able to look at the whole composition. So this way, actually, it's a lot easier for me to, to keep everything simple. Okay, and uh, so this is the uh, uh, value study that I, I follow. And usually, when I when I start my my painting, I uh, with watercolor, it's a lot easier for me to start from start from light to dark. Uh, I would start from the the sky, and then uh, the this import this is the most colorful area right here. And then these are the dark, uh, mid, dark mid tone. So I'm gonna uh, work my way uh, to, uh, uh, from from background to mid ground to foreground. Okay. And uh, so I use these. Uh, actually, I, I use a combination of. Uh, these uh, these two are traditional watercolor mop, and these these two are uh, Chinese Calivi brushes, and this is a hake brush which I, I used to uh, when I uh, laid down these uh, flat wash. So um, because we only have an hour, I wanted to to make sure I can get as far as I can. I decided not to wet the paper. Uh, and tell us why. What was uh, because if I wet the paper, it takes a lot longer f to dry, and it, the the uh, I guess with watercolor you kind of have to fight the time. If if it's too if it's too wet, uh, it takes uh, it's a long, it takes a long time, and if it's too dry, your paint your, your paint dries so fast that it's very difficult to get a smooth wash. So in this case, I just uh, I just I'm gonna go straight to to painting. So. 
which is this color, this color, this shape right here, the, the light shape. I got rid of the the, uh, the, the sky is going to be light, and then the ground is going to be light as well. So, but it's a cooler color. So, and because it's light, I could just I, I can just go straight to 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 that. And I usually like to mix a, a big puddle of color, and then from here. I actually sh uh, shift the color a little bit because you can see the color up here. It, it feels a little bit more, uh, um, has that yellowish to it. And then this is kind of have a purplish to it. So what I'm doing is uh, uh, I would just uh, mix a big puddle. Um, and then from here, I'm actually going to add a little bit of um, the warmer color. So it will be slightly warmer uh, up in the, the sky. So you could, there's a lot of different colors, uh, uh, the transition of uh, different temperature. So this uh, part right here, I'm not too worried about it. And but the color right here, I have to be really careful because I don't want other color to. Uh, uh, so I'm actually gonna slowly using water to to um, make the, uh, the the color from blue to a less lesser color. And now Re Reba uh, would like to know what kind of a. Uh... Uh, hake brush is it hakey brush you're using because uh, the hair keeps falling out of hers oh uh yeah just keep using that because eventually it's going to stop because uh yeah it, it happens uh when it a uh, lot of these uh calligraphy brushes they actually uh start to uh, uh shed but then if you keep using those it, eventually it will stop all right good advice and uh, yeah, so um, again, because the, the way the, the brush is a little different than, um, than these uh, traditional watercolor brushes um, is that the, the hair is the, um, is the same length from, from here to here. So what happened is um, it will allow me to have a, a totally like flat brush if I, if I paint, but then it actually can, if I can, uh, shape it a little bit, this actually becomes a round brush. So this way, it's actually very versatile for me to, to use this. And I like to, uh, especially in the, the first um, wash, I, I try to keep it lighter because I can always go darker. But it's hard to go lighter. Yeah, once it once it gets too dark, it's just very difficult to get that back. Um, so, and also um, the the way I lay down the brush, it's actually um, I like to uh, I like to have a more spontaneous brush stroke. I mean, it uh, if you're too slow, sometimes you 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 work at a uh, the way you use a brush or the way you uh, you put down the if you go back and forth with a small brush uh, it will it doesn't have that flat and and the confidence stroke that that you you can create with uh, uh, with these bigger brush um, I'm just gonna come in for a second just a second young um, there are some people who joined us midstream we had Facebook wasn't working for us this morning so we we're live on YouTube and now Facebook is working so if you guys joined us, uh, because you didn't see the beginning of the show, our guest is Young Hung Jong, who is a fabulous watercolorist in the West of the United States. Okay, Young is going to teach us how to do fall color. Yes, uh, for those of you guys just got here, um, basically that is going. This is going to be my uh, reference photo um, right here, and then from here. Um, I did a, using that, that reference, I did a, a, a value study based on that to break that down to uh, three values, your dark tone, your mid tone. I mean, your dark tone right here, your mid tone, your mid tone, and your, your light tone of the sky. So, and then from, he, from, from there, I, I used that value study to help me to identify those big shapes. And then I would use the, uh, my, my, my reference photo for color only. And then it's toward the end when I use, uh, when I'm doing the, uh, the polishing part, that's when I use the reference photo uh, for, for uh, informations. 
So, uh, so yeah, so right now I just put a light wash of the sky and then uh, for, the, for the sky and the ground. And also uh, this is, this is going to be my, my center of interest where all the um, colorful, uh, most of the, the beautiful uh, foliage, colorf uh, uh, beautiful color foliage is going to be happening right here. And then uh, toward the, uh, the upper part and the lower part right here, these are the color, it's still there, but they are not the most vibrant color. It, so the, the most uh, colorful uh, happens right around here. And this is my, my center of interest right here. So I'm gonna put all the emphasis on here and then gradually the color's gonna taper off. And then uh, while I'm, I'm waiting for this layer to, to dry, I want to make sure that the, uh, the paint settle because if I'm not, because uh, I'm not doing a, a, a full on wet on wet. So the first layer, I, I want to allow enough time for, for like, for example, right around here, if I charge another color, the colors can interact. And if, if there's too much water and it's going to push paint around. So I don't want that. I just, I just want to stick to my plan to, to make sure that I know my light tone. So right now, this is my light tone. And then now uh, I'm going to start working on this area. This is the most colorful area. And this is, and while I'm waiting for this to dry, I can, I can clean my, my palette. Do you, do you use a hairdryer normally? Uh, I, sometimes I do if, uh, uh, if I want, I'm in a hurry, like if I'm doing a demo for my class and I, I feel like I'm, I'm in a hurry, but, but, um, I guess the the hair the, the dryer makes the the paint dry differently. So I I I I just want to dry it, uh, normally. So if possible, I, I just I just like to keep it uh, let it dry uh, naturally. Okay, another um, Chinese calligraphy brushes. Uh, so the um, this um, this time I'm gonna dip into the. Uh, the colorful area, which is right around here. And with watercolor, I just want to go, if I can hit it with one time, I, I uh, th that's the best. I don't want to go back and forth and keep adding color. Uh, if I can just mix it just about right for the first time, then I don't have to worry about uh, going back. And, and the more, every time, each time you go back, it just gets more you're gonna make the color a little bit more duller and eventually you're gonna kill the color. So uh, this is my way of just getting the right color to, for the first time. You're looking for a stained glass effect. You want that white to show through, get that vibrancy. Yeah, um, because I mean that, that I think with, with uh, especially with watercolor, um, uh, there there's something about it's 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 not it's that translucency. The the it's just difficult to get. William is asking how many years you have been painting. Been painting uh, since I was a kid. Uh, I grew up in China, so I, I love art. And even back then, I didn't have any color, but I was uh, drawing with twigs and sticks. And so, uh, yes, I've been painting for a long time. So this way, I have different variations of color. Now you can see that the color is going to be most vibrant as it goes further that way it's actually it starts to um, not as the color will not be as bright, but you can feel the color. It's going to be slightly uh, uh, less saturated. And then going this way, I want to give it kind of a yellowish, a um, little bit cooler.
So when you're painting colors like this, do you have to make sure your water is clean all the time? Uh, only around this time, like only this is the the this is the the time when you really have to keep your colors clean. And uh, but most of the time, when when uh, once you're done with, because this is the the most um, a vibrant color, and I want that. I want to I want to maintain that. So so this is the part where I want to keep it as clean as possible. Yeah. But after that, I could go in there. I can use this puddle. I mean, uh, because the color is so um, precise. Like I, I don't want, I don't want any other color when I, when the the first wash right. that I, I did earlier. Um, I only uh, once it gets down here, I decided to add water. So that way, it, it, there, there's no color. This is the white of the paper. So right. this way, I can, I can really keep the the color as bright as I can. So, so there's a question waiting. that uh, Sandra Woods is asking, uh, could you tell us the orange and yellow pigments on your palette? This is a cadmium orange, and this is a, uh, uh, God, we don't, I don't know color. I mean, I, I, I just look at that. I know, I only recognize it as warm and cool. Um, I, I This is cadmium red, cadmium orange, and if this is, uh, I believe this should be cadmium or, uh, yellow m uh, medium. So, but I could, I could be wrong, but, but when we're painting, it, a lot of times I don't know the name of the color. I just kind of look at that and, and look at that, oh, this is a much warmer red than that. Um, so, yeah, sorry, uh, I can look it up later. That's all right. All right, so, good. So while I'm waiting for this to dry, the the uh, I guess some of the areas dry, and and you can see that this area um, it's not dry enough. You can see the edges are getting the the paints are pushing into that, which is actually nice because sometimes uh, you want to have a little bit of these um, uh, softer edges. And this is the thing with watercolor, and as much as you want to have control, oftentimes you don't have a hundred percent control over that but you, at, at the same time you just have to kind of learn to adjust and kind of go uh, i guess roll with the punches so um now i'm uh, i think this is dry enough and especially toward the edge of the paper i can go in there and start uh mixing a darker color so remember this is the this is the value study i did so i'm going to start out with uh, using this same exact puddle and then mix a a, a color that with a similar value as this, and then I'm gonna hit it. I'm gonna try to hit it as uh, at least uh, like uh, uh, one time, if possible, or twice, and not like back and forth. So this is the part where you just have to. Uh, and oftentimes, um, it's not really. Uh, I don't look at like so fixated on the type of paint that I, uh, which color that I go with. And I would just got randomly look at the color and to see, um, to get an idea like, oh, is it dark enough? And is it, if it's dark enough, then is it, is it uh, how intense is the color? So I feel like, oh, well, this is a bit too, this is the value, it's about right. But I feel like the, the maybe, maybe I could uh, make it a little bit more saturated. So this way I could uh, gauge, oh, okay, so wow, this is pretty strong now. So I feel like, okay, now this, this is working now. Uh, and then um, on this side right here, I'm gonna make it a little bit cooler. So you can see within this uh, two different color, but one side is a little bit uh, cooler, uh, this side is warmer, which is, I'm, that's what I'm gonna do, make this side warmer and this side cooler because it's further back uh, there. So, and also I always like to mix a, a big puddle so I have more than enough to, to, to cover the area. So this way you can see that the, um, I'm pushing my color now, uh, toward the end, uh, to the bottom right here, I'm going to actually, uh, it, it turns a little bit cooler, more of a, um, a greener color. So you can see that. <clears throat> so um, let's, 
get going. So using this to So now to, uh, as it comes down, it gets slightly warmer, but then it's not, it's actually uh, more green and slightly darker. And then I know this area, I'm gonna go back with the, my darks. Okay, hey, so I'm ready. I'm waiting. While well, I'm waiting for this to dry, I'm gonna uh, continue to work on on this side. And the way uh, I lay down my my brushwork is. Um, I know my big shapes are here, so I'm not too timid. I'm not too worried about the exact, uh, uh, I'm not trying to match that. I'm trying to create the feeling of, of that. So as long as I have my, the, the, where, I know where my big shapes are, uh, the, um, the, I don't, it does not have to be the exact location. So um, it, uh, this actually frees me from, from um, having to worry about matching the drawings. You guys got a question, put it in the comments. So now I'm going to hit this shape right here. Somebody's asking where the photo was taken. Uh, actually, it's taken actually very close to where I live. It's actually, uh, do you, uh, if you live in Tiger, you wouldn't know. It's actually uh, next to Home Depot. If you, I think you... <laughs> Yeah, you next to any Home Depot, you can find a scene like that. Yeah. He's in Portland, Oregon, in that area. The brushes look like they had a lot of water. Do you dry them with a towel or sponge before loading the paint? Uh, actually, um, I I don't usually dry my brush. I just uh, because all the colors are they're, they're very close to each other. They they're they're talking to that meaning they're relating to each other so so i could just go here and and get that so i don't i don't really clean my brushes but once i'm done with my mid tone then actually i go in there and and start uh cleaning my brush and and change the the um uh make sure that i i have the colors are 
uh, a matching. Where do you find good calli calligraphy brushes? You can find the, there's a website called uh, AsianBrushPainter.com that I buy a lot of my, my brushes from there. So now <clears throat> I have my uh, light tone, my mid tone down. So I just, I just have to, this time I have to wait until uh, these uh, wash uh, uh, dry before I hit my darks because if I don't do that, then it the the uh, the edge is gonna I lose all the shapes. So while I'm doing that, uh, as much as I don't like to to uh, use a, a dryer to to dry it, so I could actually start. Uh, work I'll on tell you what I need to take a quick break anyway, so I'm going to take you off camera for a second. You can use your dryer and. And uh, we won't have to experience the noise. <laughs> okay, that's good. Okay, thanks, Eric. All right, so uh, this is dry. Um, the, the, a certain area is still kind of wet, but that, that's okay. So I, I use a dryer. Uh, it's a lot quicker. And um, so at this point, uh, the painting is not finished. I mean, it, we're, we, in order for you to see, like to judge a painting, whether oh, is, it, is, it, is it done, like oh, it's not going don't don't like prematurely judge your painting because I have not put my dark shapes in there yet. So so the idea is to put your light tone, your mid tone and your dark tone all in and then you'll be able to tell like, oh, did I did I capture that? Is, is, am I going the right direction? But so far, uh, I, I feel like I'm I, this is going the right direction. Um, I like there's a lot of color variations. There's like the the orange, the red, the pink, the green. All these are they are harmonious. They're talking to each other. Uh, even the the reds here, it it's kind of like a purple. It's it's on the red family, but but definitely it's all within that. So and then by contrast that with the uh, uh, um, with the blue. So uh, so right right now. I'm going to mix uh, a darker uh, tone. So my dark tones, remember, is uh, these dark tones right here. And so uh, you can see the, the these are the darks. And um, hey, you know, I, I don't like to waste paint, right? So I'm going to I'm going to use whatever I have here. This is a uh, paint gray, which I actually like to use quite a bit. And so it's kind of a, um, so because I have some red color uh, that I didn't clean my palette. And now this thing has more of a, a warmer tone. And if I do the same thing, but I add a little bit more. So this actually gave it a lot more red than this one. And then if I use this area right here, you will be able to tell that you can see get a variety of, of dark. I mean, you have your uh, cooler blue, dark blue uh, over here, and then you have my warm red, which you can see a lot over here. So you can see there's a lot of even within the um, within the uh, uh, the darks. There's there's like uh, color variations in there too. Interesting that you rehearse your brush strokes before you lay them down. Um, the same way uh, when I do calligraphy as well, you, like you try to, 
you think about it and then you just hit it. <clears throat> and I like to kind of keep that same um, energy that I have earlier. And uh, allow, allow your brush to kind of create some interesting mark uh, rather than just make it, uh, don't try to control too much. That's me trying to control everything. Right, like the, 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 you, the more you trust your brush or, or, or your, your, when you put down your, 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 your um, Like make it like once. Don't like go back and forth, and and you you'll be able to tell that if this artist is confident or or uh, like you could see that just the way uh, uh, an artist put down the the marks uh, that you really like when you put. I think this has a lot to do with the um, the way the Chinese when I was practicing calligraphy. I mean, you can't like go back and forth, and and you. You have one chance to do it. You do it. Uh, you do it, and then you trust that it's gonna be fine. Um, and whatever you have, it's what you got. So, um, hmm. interesting to watch this come together. So. Um, don't be afraid to to be more expressive with your color. I mean, with your 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 brushwork, because it, it, um, the more uh, you worry about the details, it's gonna bog you uh, bog uh, bog down on on the way you paint. And and the the more you you you're confident about your brush, it will actually come across like you have like you you really allow that brush to 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 um to work for you and these are uh, the uh, foliage the foreground it's better to indicate that it's better to suggest um not try to paint every little uh, uh every leaf that you find it's just uh, allowed allow that that um, some of the um, those mark making to be a little bit more random I'm looking for my uh, palette knife palette knife using a palette knife and watercolor Yes, I am going to get a palette knife too. Oh, I've never seen that in my life. <clears throat> so I have uh, this palette knife right here. Um, so what I'm doing is actually creating like additional uh, to bring out the, the lighter, like some textures because I think oil, uh, we have like oil painters, they have a lot of texture to, to work with, but watercolor, I feel like this is one way for me to, to add some texture to that. Hmm. Careful, don't rip the paper. Oh, I, I've had that happen before. Um, uh, that's why I, I, uh, I'm using a, a 140 pounds. So it's pretty safe to do that. Like in the past, I've, I've used um, 90 pounds and 
and uh, and and that actually had happened before. So I. Do you ever paint with your palette knife? I mean, do you ever dip it in the in the uh, paint and then try to make like a tree trunk or something? That I have never done that before. Okay, let's try it right now. Let's just see if we can pull it off. All right. You know what? Some I'm gonna try. Right. All right. Let's see. We like to look at that. Like really super fine line, like thin line, or or, but it's difficult to pick up the the, the color. Yeah, it seems to be. Much uh, better with oil. <laughs> no, it's, at, least, it's, at least you had the guts to try it. <clears throat> hey, you know, I, I often tell my students to, to try different things, keep an open mind, and so yeah, I, I, I I'll try anything, you know. Um, and not somebody said it work, It works. Uh, you can use a credit card to do the same thing. Yes, it might, uh, it might stick better to a credit card because it's a uh, it's not a metal surface. I'm gonna. Well, with what I mean, because it's water based, it's just it doesn't have the thickness. So it. Yeah. I, I guess it. Uh, okay. So now um, this is the stage where you have to stop and think about, okay, so um, did I get the feeling that I'm looking for and what needs work? And uh, this is the part where uh, rather than just continue to dive in there and add more details, you have to step back and think about, okay, well, uh, my initial goal is to make the color uh, more, uh, to show that full color. And I feel like, wow, this, I, I, I think I got the feel of it, but I want to push it a little bit more. So this is the second time that I'm actually gonna um, add more, even more intense color to a certain a in a certain area. I wanna point out to everybody while you're getting your color ready that when you put those darks against the color, the light color, it's gonna make it stand out a lot more. So that's very effective. Yep. Yep. And I really like to push that color. Loving this. If you guys tuned in late, like Andy, who just said he tuned in late, um, the full program will be on YouTube. We had a little false start with uh, Facebook this morning, but um, we're learning how to paint full color and watercolor. And our guest is Young Hong Jong. And, and you're going to be on the faculty of Watercolor Live. That's correct. What are you going to yeah. be teaching? Something yeah. completely different, I assume. Yes, it's uh, something different, something also another favorite of mine. So uh, another okay. favorite subject of mine. So right. yeah, be sure to uh, uh, sign up for that too. You know, one of the things that I think is really interesting is I've discovered that this is a transformation event. And what I mean by that is we're seeing people whose, whose lives are transformed because you know, when you if you attend a workshop or something once in a while, every few months or a couple times a year for your whole life, I mean, that's a very helpful. But where you get your transformation is from immersion. And when you're immersed in Watercolor Live for like three days, it is, you, you come out of there ready. You know, you're ready. And then you're going to really work it and improve. And then following year, you come back and you're going to be ready to go to the next level. A lot Absolutely. of people on here have gone several times. Especially when you uh, see like all these different artists and how they, it's very inspirational. Well, it's, but yeah, and there's so many different approaches to watercolor. You know, there are some people who, like you, paint in a kind of a looser, more, uh, dare I say, runny, you know, watercolor style. And then there are others who paint very, very tight, very controlled. And everybody's got something that they can teach you. Yep. Yep. How much time do I have, Eric? 
Uh, I'm going to give you five more, and then I'm going to pull the plug. What do you think? Okay. All right. All right. <clears throat> Working on it. <laughs> And you can always post the finished painting later. Oh, yeah. I actually uh, uh, do my daily posting on Instagram and Facebook as well. All right. How did we live without those? <laughs> Although I had more time when I wasn't checking social media. That's true. So now I'm going to add a little bit of cooler, um, the green in the back right around here. I'm going to put, this is more like a glaze. All right. Because so that way it, it kind of contrasts with the red that I have over here. Again, this is just a, an my initial block in and of course the um you can take it as far as you can and depending on your personality and your style and some some artists actually go all in and they they, they and for me i just wanted to to get the uh put all my emphasis on the the focal point and then yeah. the rest i want to suggest that to my audience rather than just show yeah. them everything well, and then and then you'll you'll get into how you fully develop a painting on watercolor live. That'll be good. Oh yeah. All right. Cool. Well, I think we're going to pull the plug here. Yep. And uh, have you come back on camera real quickly? Absolutely. All right. So if you're new to us, we're Art School Live. We're here every day at twelve noon. Our guest today is Young Hung Jong. You did a fabulous job, and. Uh, Everybody give thumbs up, applause, and shares. That's that's always helpful. And uh, we're excited to have you on Watercolor Live. That's going to be really cool. Yes, make sure to sign up. It's actually it's a fun event. It is a fun event. I, I get to host it. So and, and actually, I'm working on a surprise. I don't know if I'll pull it off yet. But um, I was on the phone with my surprise this morning trying to figure out how to incorporate this him or her into uh, watercolor live is a surprise. We'll see. You never oh. know. I was always trying new things. Absolutely. All right. We will put your website and all of your information. If you want to know about that, uh, Amadine's going to put it in the comments now. Uh, Young, it's been a pleasure. Uh, you and I met. You reminded me that we met in Portland, Oregon. I was in town for some reason. I don't remember what it was. And then there was like a cocktail party at some hotel and we, I got to meet a lot of folks around Portland and that was really fun. So thank you for reminding me of that. You're welcome. Thanks for having me.